Thank you, Will, Jair, and the Plummer Brothers. It's good to have you here. I think at this time is when the young children will head to a jam ministry during the sermon time. Moms and dads, they'll be invited to come back for Holy Communion this morning so we can look for the thundering herd in just a few minutes. Wow, it's great to see so many here today. So, buenos dias, uh, Esperanza Viva, this morning as well. Uh, today, before we begin the sermon, uh, it's one of the traditions we have is uh, on this All Saints Sunday to remember uh, the people of the um, Bethany Church who have gone before us. We just sang about that till till he returns or calls us home, and we had some. We had uh, seven people from the uh, Bethany community, and and there may have been some from Esperanza Viva as well that God called home. Some as recent as this past Tuesday, uh, Thelma Elam. I do want to let you all know there will be a visitation for uh, Thelma, uh, and actually uh, Thelma's daughter, Sharon, uh, passed on Wednesday, the day after Thelma. So there'll be visitation over at Hodap Funeral Home tonight from 6 to 8 for both of them. And then tomorrow uh, we'll have visitation here at noon, and then we'll have a service celebrating their lives uh, at uh, 1 o'clock tomorrow as well. So I want you to be aware of that. But well, let's pause uh, for just a couple moments. I'm going to read the names, and we'll lift these people up to the Lord in prayer. And undoubtedly, in addition to these seven names, we have uh, family members, we have parents, siblings, others who have uh, gone on to be with the Lord Jesus during this past year. And so we take a moment on this All Saints Sunday to be intentional about thanking God for the promise of everlasting life found in Jesus Christ. So at this time, if you would join me in prayer. God, as we gather together today, we thank you, Lord, that we can come here and, and worship you in this place. And Lord, in the, in the midst of uh, all that's happening in our lives, we want to pause and thank you for some people that you brought to be uh, a part of this church community that uh, impacted uh, the lives of so many. Uh, Lord, we, we read in, in Hebrews how it's the saints uh, above that are cheering us on to keep going. Well, we want to stop now, Lord, and be intentional about lifting up these names uh, to you and giving thanks for the ways that they were a part of uh, life here, uh, here in Liberty Township, here as a part of the Bethany Church. And Lord, anyone else uh, that might have been a part of the Esperanza Viva Church, we lift them up to you as well. So hear now, Lord, the, the names of these saints. We give thanks for Bud Barnhouse. Lord, this morning we thank you for Eva Condon. This morning we remember and give thanks for Paul Cornett. And for Alice Eiler. We thank you so much for Dottie Lafette. And for Phyllis Norvell. for Thelma Elam, and then for any other loved ones that we lift up, Lord, in our hearts and minds this morning. Thank you for the promise of everlasting life. Lord, at times like this when we miss these people, help us to hold tight to that promise. And so we thank you, Lord, and we pray these things, Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I met with Thelma's family last night and they said that uh, just last week, um, in fact, after worship, Beth and I went over, I know some other folks to do to see her, and they said when they told her that, uh, Grandma, we think that, um, you know, that you may, may not get better as far as this time, and, and Thelma said, uh, oh, really? And she goes, yeah, we think so. She goes, so, you're, so it's my time to go? And they said, yeah, we think so. She says, okay. And they said she was laid back and waited a few minutes and then she kind of peeked around. She goes, well, I'm ready, but I guess not quite yet. And, uh, and she did that. And then uh, I think it was, um, was it Wednesday, I believe, that she went home to be with Jesus. So what an incredible uh, woman that she was. Uh, today we're continuing the series 
This is part four of the six-part series, for those of you who keep track, uh, a break free, becoming a disciple-making culture. Uh, again, my hope is as we kind of go on this journey together of, of trying to bring clarity and developing a, a pathway for spiritual maturity, and while we do that, a uh, part of who we are is, is inviting and joining with and doing together a one-on-one -on -one disciple making, just kind of walking with friends together. Because uh, as you, you are probably aware, the, the idea of being Christian, certainly in this culture, in this area, has, has really changed over the last 30, 40 years. When I was growing up, being Christian meant that you uh, went to church, and maybe a Sunday school class and, and maybe served a little bit. And today, uh, that, um, those things are included, but um, I think God is looking to us to live as followers of Jesus 24-7. The passage that we have is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, 34 to 44. I, I believe we have it in Spanish as well. So Pastor Edinson, if you'd like to come up, and we'll, uh, I'll read it in English, and then um, we'll have you read it in Spanish. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. And so they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. De Marcos, capítulo número seis, dice, Al desembarcar, él vio una gran multitud y tuvo compasión de ellos, porque eran como ovejas sin pastor. Y comenzó a enseñarles muchas cosas. Y cuando era ya muy tarde, sus discípulos se le acercaron diciendo, El lugar está desierto y ya es muy tarde. Despídelos para que vayan a los campos y aldeas de alrededor y se compren algo de comer. Pero respondiendo, él les dijo, denle en ustedes. Y ellos le dijeron, ¿Quién eres? ¿Quieres que vayamos y compremos 200 denarios de pan y le demos de comer? Él les dijo, ¿cuántos panes tienes? Y, y ved. Y cuando se censuraron, le dijeron, cinco y dos peces. Y les mandaron que todos se recostaran por grupos sobre la hierba verde. Y se recostaron por grupos de 100 y de 50. Entonces, él tomó los cinco panes y los dos peces y levantando los ojos al cielo los bendijo y partió los panes y los iba dando a los discípulos para que los sirvieran también repartió los dos peces entre todos y todos comieron y se saciaron y recogieron doce cestas llenas de pedazos y también de los peces los que comieron los panes eran cinco mil hombres palabra del Señor Gracias. Thank you, Pastor. I love it having the uh, two languages. Um, I mean, I'm trying to learn Spanish, but most of it I, I, I'm not yet there. But I just think it's one of the ways that, as we were singing earlier, I think it's one of the ways that God is saying, you know what, this, this, is, a, this is a taste of my kingdom. This is kind of uh, what it's like as we're together, united in Jesus' name. So... All right, the five levels of leadership. Today, I want to just begin. I, I, uh, as um, the, the subtitle of today's message is Show the World, Equipping Others to Serve. Again, we know Christ, we grow with others, and then we show the world. But showing the world is not just us serving. It's showing the world as we equip others to serve and serve alongside them. And I, I thought about John Maxwell. 
Um, John is, I, I think he'd be considered one of the patriarchs of leadership coaching. Uh, was especially popular uh, a few years ago. And um, so I went to a number of his seminars. John was never short on words. He always had plenty to say, but, and much of it had substance. But I remember at the end of one of his seminars, he was kind of wrapping it up and he said, um, okay, before we, before we depart, uh, if you don't remember anything else you've heard in this day and a half, I wanna share with you uh, the most important thing I'm gonna say. He says, if you want to experience success in your ministry or whatever it is that you're leading, if you want to make a difference for God's kingdom, then you'll do uh, what I'm about to say. And uh, he was kind of, <clears throat> his classic way of long pause, because we're thinking, all right, tell us already. And he said, sadly, I, I believe some of you are gonna leave this place and you're not gonna do what I say, but this is the key to being effective in ministry. You know, are you ready? And we're like, yes, we're ready already. He says, here it is. Never do ministry alone. Never do ministry alone. And he says, now, what does that mean? He goes, let me share with you what that means. It means never do ministry alone. <laughs> do ministry with somebody. Don't do it alone. And that's what it means. And so, we're, we're, uh, so John was kind of pointing in the direction of discipling someone else, walking with someone else, inviting, joining, doing. In fact, uh, as I think about doing things together, we, uh, one of the things that are y'all aware, we're striving to have a memory verse for each month. And welcome to November. Can you believe it's November, right? November already. And uh, we have a new Bible verse. It's uh, on the back page of your uh, bulletin at the bottom. You know, the page where you take copious notes each week on the message and then review them three or four times during the week. And uh, right, 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 why are you laughing? Um, we talked with our children's ministry directors, Tracy and Ruth. They have kind of a theme verse for the month. And we said, well, wouldn't it be cool if we as adults join with our children and as, as families or, um, or just adults with children here at Bethany, learn it together. So it's Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine. It didn't make the, it didn't make the, the video cut, but it's on your bulletin. Would you say that together with me? Here we go, Ecclesiastes four, nine. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. Now y'all, we, we can memorize that one. That is not in my memory bank of verses I've memorized, but we got it, right? Two are better than one because you have a good, what, well, we have a good reward for our toil, our toil, something like that. So uh, two are better than one. We, we don't believe you should ever journey alone. And part of the reason for that is because uh, that's how Jesus did ministry. That's how Jesus made disciples with other people. We have this graphic we've uh, we put together to kind of show again a pathway for spiritual maturity. That's what we're really emphasizing, focusing on. We're gonna be looking at it next year and beyond. It's pathway for spiritual maturity, walking on that pathway and doing it with somebody else. Where, we, where you see we have, a few weeks ago, we talked about how it starts with a few and it's all about Jesus. So you invite people to gatherings, kind of the um, one example of the gatherings here, probably the primary example, is the worship time, like right now. So we, in the living of our life, we, we pray, Lord, who would you have me invite today to come to worship? And then we join with people to go to classes. We have Sunday morning classes, and we have other groups as well. And so we pray, Lord, who would you have me take to a class? One thing to keep in mind as far as being with somebody on the journey is you may participate, join with somebody in a class that you've already studied once, twice, three times, because the point is that you're going with somebody to equip and help them. And then today we're, we're looking a bit at doing, about serving others, serving those in need, and doing it together with other people. Because again, our mission here at Bethany is what? Helping one another experience the life God offers. And we do that as we, what? Know Christ so we can invite others to know him, grow with others so we can help others grow and show the world so that we can take people along and equip them to serve as well. Never alone, we're becoming a disciple-making community. That's the direction we're going. All right, I have this morning with me, uh, it could be a snack, but I have, can, can you all see what I, what I have here? What, what is this? Anyone just tell me. An apple, right. Now, here's the big question this morning. How many apples do I have right here? How many apples do I have? I have uno or one. 
But what if we were to consider how many potential apples do I have? Exactly. How many seeds are there? We have the potential here for an apple orchard, in fact. If I were to take the seeds, put them in the ground, nurture them, uh, help them have the right conditions, grow into an apple tree, take those apples, take out the seeds, plant them again. And so within this apple is the potential for an apple orchard. And I say that this morning because it's the same with disciple making. As you consider your own walk with Christ, you know, are you going to be one disciple, one follower of Jesus, or are you going to realize the potential of being in a whole orchard of disciples? Like you might turn to the person next to you and say, you know, you, you look like you have orchard potential here. You're looking kind of, kind of leafy today. We have um, one, one thing we have is called the disciple makers loop. Again, the disciple makers loop that kind of helps us along this pathway of walking with other people. You, you first teach him what it is we're going to do. So, okay, we're going to, him or her, we're going to go, you notice, okay, so you all know, so we, we alternated the pronouns here. So we're in this together. Um, so you teach them what it's gonna be about. We're gonna, hey, we're gonna go downtown and we're gonna serve some food or we're gonna hand out uh, warm winter coats to people because it's gonna be cold here soon. But then you tell them why, because the what is not, is often not very inspiring. It's like, okay, whatever, but why is it? Why is it? Because we want people to experience the life God offers. That's why we do what we do. Then what, you show them how, okay, we get in the car, we set a time, we go down, we do this, and then you get her started. All right, here we are, yep, here's the food, thank you, you know, God bless you, blah, blah, blah. And then you keep them going and you help them pass it on so that then they, at some point, they do the same thing. It's like, hey, come with me. We're, we're helping people experience the life God offers. I mean, really, what better purpose could you have in life than to say, I want to, in what might seem like a small way, but you never know how God might take, take that small way and make it a, an, an apple orchard. I want to uh, help you as, as I'm blessed, you'll be blessed. Let's, uh, let's go and help others experience the life that God is offering. And from that model, you see that it grows. Today we, we read uh, from the Gospel of Mark chapter 6, and I chose that example, and it's, I think it'd be fair to say it's one of the familiar uh, passages that's read a lot about Jesus feeding the 5,000. And again, we say 5,000, it said 5,000 men, there were uh, women there, children, it's probably more like 10 to 15,000 as far as the uh, total. But Jesus fed them all, but what was he doing? He was equipping the disciples to, to serve, to be prepared, not only while he's there, but when he's gone as well. We, saw, we read that Jesus saw the crowd. It was getting near the end of the day. He knew they were hungry, so he had compassion on them. And he asked the disciples then uh, what they had to offer to feed these people. And initially they're like, whoa, this is a lot of people here, Jesus. And basically he's like, well, let me show you how this is done when we call upon God to help us in what we're doing. And he equipped them to serve. So I want to take a few moments this morning, keeping that in mind, to, uh, to uh, consider how do we help others, how do we help equip others to serve? How do we show the world by equipping others to serve? So three things uh, that are necessary to do that. The first is you need to get spiritually prepared. Whenever we do prepare to do a ministry here at Bethany, we, uh, we spend time praying so that God would help us see the things that he'd want us to see and be aware of what we want to do. Even Jesus, after, you know, when he was age 30, he'd been a carpenter in his village, undoubtedly a very, you know, you, you know get a table and chair from Jesus. Uh, that, that'd be worth something on eBay. And, uh, but then the time w had come for him to begin his ministry. And what did he do? He went for 40 days, he fasted and prayed. He fasted and prayed because he had to get spiritually prepared for that which God was calling him. You know, I found God in his grace. When we uh, maybe get forgetful about part of the life God wants us to experience, I find he'll send ways to remind us. And just over the last few weeks, I've on multiple occasions uh, heard and read about people that fast and pray and then, and then incredible ministries take place. One was, I think I mentioned it last Sunday, a couple of weeks ago, a group of us from Bethany went down to Nashville for a, a discipleship, a disciple-making conference. And a couple of the men that spoke were from uh, Africa, 
And they talked about how they fast and pray. And again, it's incredible. I, I did not realize that people of the Muslim faith in Africa are coming to, to Christ, are becoming Christians by the thousands. I mean, it was just, it was bordering on unbelievable what they shared. And they said, you know, we're not particularly gifted. We're not extraordinarily intelligent. We just offer ourselves, but we fast and pray. We fast and pray. And they talked about how the first three days of each month, they fast and pray. And then the, every Wednesday of each week, they fast and pray. Um, so we were talking in staff meeting this week a little bit about this, and we're, we're kind of still in conversation. So any staff members don't go, wait a second, I didn't agree to that. But, but we did kind of come towards the direction of a possibility of fasting on the last day of the month, each month. And I want to invite you as Bethany to consider fasting and praying on the last day of the month. Now, a first step when we were at this conference, they said, well, invite people to fast for three hours at first. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh yeah, three hours. Oh Lord, I'm gonna sacrifice. I'm gonna fast from one to 4 p.m. Woo! And, but I think his point was, because he said start with three hours, and then go to six, and then 12, then 24, and then whatever God's calling you to do. And I think the intention of that three hours was that it's now in your mind. You're thinking about it, and you're asking God about it. And so we'll be inviting you to, to join together as we get to the last day of each month. Uh, and we're not gonna be legalistic about it. I, I actually started at the end of October, but I looked at my calendar, and you gotta smile, because I find when you fast, that's when, yeah, yeah, uh, people show up with an apple pie, or uh, I, heard, I heard one, uh, Laura and Justin mentioned that. And I looked at my calendar, and I had a, uh, a lunch with one of our children who goes to Middletown Christian Schools, a lunch on the 1st of um, November. And I'm like, wow. So um, I'm not going to skip that lunch with this child. So we just backed it up 24 hours. And so this last week I fasted. Uh, what I usually do is at 6 p.m., I mean, I'll eat dinner, and then from 6 p.m. until 6 p.m. the next day, I'll fast. And so I basically, I skip two meals. But uh, along with that, I try to be very intentional about spending more time in prayer, and usually about specific things on my heart, and then just try to listen for what God would have me say. And sometimes you're like, wow. Uh, a lot of times it's like, Lord, help me just be faithful. I trust in you. So to equip others to serve, you gotta get spiritually prepared as Jesus did, and you fast and pray. Secondly, secondly to uh, equip others to serve as we show the world is you give the Lord your first and your best. You know, when Jesus was with the big crowd and he had compassion on them, he wanted to feed them. He said, the disciples, let's, let's give them something to eat. And, and, and the disciples, did you catch their first response? Whoa, what do you want us to do? Essentially, I'm paraphrasing. Do you want us to take all the money we have, Jesus, all that we have, go buy some bread, which really you can read in other gospels, which would really just give everyone just a little bite. Is that what you're calling us to do, Jesus? And uh, I always love it when he kind of ignores the obvious, uh, no, just listen, just listen. And what does he say? He says, well, how much do you have? How many loaves do you have? And, they, and he says, go find out and come back to me. And so they did. And what did they have? Five loaves, two fish. And Jesus is saying, all right, offer to me what you have. And that's the same in your life. You know, we look and we see the, the challenges before us in our communities. And we're like, gosh, what am, what am I going to do? And I just think the Lord is saying to you, will you offer to me what you have? And then see what I might be able to do with that. And not only just what you have, but the first and the best. If we go to the last book of the Bible, last book of the Old Testament, the prophet Malachi, he's known as kind of the stewardship um, prophet. In fact, a couple weeks from now, we might take a visit back to him. So don't skip out because a couple weeks we're going to talk about stewardship. But Malachi says, I'm paraphrasing, he's a prophet and he's looking at the priests in the temple and he says, God says, <clears throat> you're robbing him. You're robbing him. I think a few uh, weeks ago, um, Mr. Old Mr. Plumber, not the one playing here in the band, but Old Doug, I think he preached on this as well. He says, you're, uh, I love you, Doug. Um, <clears throat> you're younger than me. Um, he said, you're robbing God. And they're like, what do you mean? And they said, because you're giving God your leftovers. And here's how I would encapsulate what's being said in Malachi chapter three. God is saying, test me in this. It's the one place in the Bible where God says, take a step of faith, test me. And he says, 
if you take uh, your first 10% and give it to me, with 90% and me, meaning God, you'll do more, you'll accomplish more, you'll get so much more done than 100% without me. 90% with God will accomplish so much more than 100% by yourself. So God says, test him in that. So I encourage you to test him in that with your, res- your financial resources, with the time that you have, with your talents. So give the Lord your first and your best. And then finally, to uh, show the world by equipping people to serve, go and set an example. To equip a friend to serve, you gotta set the example. You gotta do it yourself. It's so important to keep in mind. Jesus would get so angry with the religious leaders when he said, you're, here's how he put it. I wrote it, Luke 11, 46. He says, you're crushing people with your unreasonable religious demands and you yourselves, you're not lifting a finger. Says, you can't do that. If you wanna equip someone to serve, then you're gonna serve with them. You're gonna do the same thing. And parents and grandparents, this is especially important uh, for you as well, to set an example for your kids because your kids are, are watching you. There's a great verse, Proverbs 22, uh, verse 6, that says, uh, point your kids in the right direction, and when they're old, they won't be lost. Well, to point them in the right direction, or some of the translations say, train up a child in the way of the Lord, and when he's old, he'll return to it. In other words, how do you point him in the right direction? How do you train him up? You demonstrate by doing it, doing it yourself. And so... As far as applying what we're talking about today, let me ask, which are you? Which are you? Are you the disciples at first who said, there is no way, there is no way. They saw the the problem and they, they looked at themselves, Jesus, there is no way we can feed all these people. I mean, think about how we might say that sometimes. There is no way I can get up at five in the morning to go to downtown Cincinnati. I just don't wake up that early. There is no way I can take off from work to go on a mission trip. There's no way some of this, there's no way I can do this disciple making kind of stuff that we're learning and growing together. Are are you in that camp or are you saying, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna offer what I have. I'm gonna offer my first and my best. I'm gonna take a step of faith and see what Jesus can do. I'm gonna offer my first and my best. Here you go, Jesus, here I am. Here's what I have, here they are. Uh, Let's see what you can do. I encourage you all to do that. I know, I know in many ways we are. So let's continue to encourage one another and invite others along for the ride. What, what better life purpose is there than to help one another experience the life that God offers? So bottom line, as we look to these upcoming days, serve, serve in some capacity. We have a number of avenues here through Bethany, servants to the least of these, the Power Source Lunch, which is next week. We have, I know the, the director, Kathy of Hamilton Living Waters, uh, she is uh, yearning for some additional volunteers to help with their kind of after school things with kids. Matthew 25, there's all kinds of possibilities, but serve in some way in these days ahead and bring someone along with you to do it. Don't do it alone, take someone with you along. Well, this morning we're, uh, we're gonna have Holy Communion together and certainly talk about an example of Jesus setting the example for us. He gave his all. He gave his life so that we would walk with him. So I invite Pastor Edin Sandiarco to come back up as we prepare our hearts and our minds this morning. During this time today, let's let's be in prayer that God would help us to see the needs before us. Liberty Township, Hamilton, downtown Cincinnati, wherever he's leading us that he'd open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds, and that we would be active in serving and equipping others to do the same. Pastor, do you want to begin this morning? They provided two loaves of bread so we can each uh, break it. So uh, if if you'd like, go ahead. La noche que el Señor Jesús 
fue entregado, tomó en sus manos el pan y después de dar gracias lo partió y dijo este es mi cuerpo que es partido por cada uno de ustedes On the night our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples. He took bread, and after giving thanks, and, and in fact, did you notice in the, in the passage today, when he was getting ready to serve 5,000, or when he was getting ready to be with 12, it says in both cases, he took the bread, and the first thing he did was he gave thanks. And so he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. De la misma forma tomó en sus manos la copa y dijo, Esta es mi sangre que fue derramada por cada uno de ustedes. Todas las veces que toméis de esta copa, mi muerte anunciáis hasta que yo venga. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And again, after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is my blood of the new covenant. It's shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink in remembrance of me. Would you like to pray? Gracias, Señor, por este tiempo por este pan por este vino gracias por el privilegio que tenemos de ser uno en ti oh Dios gracias por esta iglesia en Betany que está dando un ejemplo Señor de ser uno junto con esperanza viva oh Dios permita que podamos caminar este camino juntos para tu gloria en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Thank you, Lord, for this holy time, for this bread and this cup. Thank you, Lord, that you're always reaching out to us, saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. Please come and know the forgiveness that only I can give. Please come and, and know the fulfillment through my Holy Spirit, please come and be in fellowship with me and with the, the church, the body of Christ. We thank you, God, for who you are and what you've done, all in Jesus' name. And thank you for the children. Amen.